both day. Plead guilty. Uh, we'll get you off in a couple of years, and we'll take care of your family. Somebody up there doesn't want these boys to really have this whole trial. So, week after week, more than, for more than 200 times now, millions of television watchers in their weekly quest for entertainment and escape are presented with an ethic that a total disrespect for civil liberties is not only in order, but to be desired as long as you don't get caught. I think that great jurists like Justice Holmes and Brandeis must be turning over in their graves. This is the current status of American popular culture. Well, I have uh, several more examples, but I think by now you, you understand my position. Uh, anybody wants further evidence, I'll be, I'll be here for the next couple of days and be glad to defend my position or at least listen to your point of view because, and I, and I certainly would hope, and I know that, that during the week there will be many examples of what is good in popular culture. I mean, and there are many good examples. And I, uh, if we get to a piano in the next couple of days, you'll see me playing Cole Porter or Irving uh, Berlin or Jerome Kearns because I think that there's, I love those sort of things. And I, but I felt when I started to write this thing, I started with an open mind that I had to re-examine my position. Uh, I haven't given you any solutions because that, that would take another hour. And I'm not sure that there are any solutions for this. There are no solutions to the things that I said unless we want to change our whole value system in this country, if, unless it comes a time when instead of judging our prosperity on gross national product, we develop a sort of indices which might be called refined value productivity. I mean, where we had a set of indices where we, where we could le really see whether Americans, the total aspects of life are not tied up with, with how much money we make, but how, how well we live, how much happiness there is, how mu if there's, is there a diminution of this, these terrible statistics, the kind that I've given you. That might be a solution, but frankly, I don't think that we're ready for that solution yet, and maybe if you're good enough to invite me back here uh, 20 years from now, I shall totter up here, and maybe we'll say that somebody came up with a solution. I hope. I really hope. I hope that everything I've said turns out to be ephemeral, that we turn back to the values of this country, that which, to the love of the soil, to the, to the goodness which is in this country, and which is, which we're being sold down the, sold down the, no, I just, I, I'll end up with a quote from Nick Johnson, the article that he wrote. He said, a successful grassroots campaign is, I believe, the best and perhaps the only way to persuade Congress to, to legislate in this area. And he's talking about legislating against drug ads, where you have a $2 billion drug problem where you can buy, where they're sold everything on the air. You know, you, the next one minute you see Mr. Kissinger with the president, next minute you've got an ad where your stomach is churning or something of the sort, and we're selling a lot of bad stuff. And as a result, Nick Johnson says, the people, the people, have a great fight ahead of them if they are truly to make their voices heard above the din of the special interests, if they are really going to recapture their government from the corporations that stole it from them. Those are hard words, but I'll end with that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, David. I'd say we're off to a provocative start in this week's Institute. Uh, the usual format for uh, once the speaker has concluded his remarks is to invite questions from the audience for a while. And those of you who would like to stay and uh, to direct questions to Dr. White are welcome to do so. Are there questions? We have one over here. David, would you step up to the yes, rostrum, sir. please? Why don't you let the other people who yep. have to go All study right. and, and go watch television or whatever <laughs> they have to do? <laughs> so, and then and those who can stay would be delighted to, to. Thanks for coming, folks, those students particularly. Thanks a lot. Oh, no.
the three or four questions. Yeah. What what you think? Beautiful. Yeah, that's it. we were. Huh? I beg your pardon. Of course, I'll buy a copy. All right. I'll review it. Uh, yes, sir. You had a question. I take it the, the gentleman is uh, one of the speakers. At, uh, is this Mr. Zito? No, Mr. Rogers from the American Film Institute. No. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't. I haven't met all of my colleagues. I I I, I hate to think because uh, I don't like uh, Dr. Wortham's uh, simplistic uh, views on comic books uh, very much. I don't think he's very scientific, and nobody would ever accuse me of. of no, I, no, I don't. I don't. I don't uh, I, I hear what you say, and this is always the stock answer of those who disagree because they say, you know, you really can't prove it. Uh, but there are some bad effects, and uh, I don't, as, as Wilbur Schramm said, I mean, maybe we, we may not be able to document it in a, in a demographic way or something, but uh, why why take that chance? And, and even if even if the even if the the violence did not, I mean, I won't even say that, I'm not even suggesting that there are causal effects because I've, I've been a social scientist for too many years to, to fall exactly in the trap. Although Bandura's research is pretty convincing. Uh, Bandura is a pretty well-known psychologist. I'll, uh, he's not a Dr. Wortham screaming. Albert Bandura is a very competent, uh, laboratory-oriented uh, man at Stanford University. So there are some evidences that that the effects of violence are, are deleterious. But even beyond that, why do we have to, why do we have to condition, and, and, and this is, I think, more important point, our, our children and ourselves to, th to always live in this, in, this, in this violent kind of world. And, and this is even more disturbing to me. And, it, and, it, and it's violence often for the most invidious and the most uh, patent kind of violence. I, of course there are violence. I mean, uh, I, 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 Dostoevsky discussed violence. I mean, great writers have discussed violence, but there is a raison d'etre. There is an there is an endemic uh, aspect of the novel which which sees all this, so that uh, that you you have Dmitri uh, Karamazov as a violent person, but he's he's equated with Alyosha Karamazov, who, who who there's something else in this world, but in the in the world of of the mass of the of the purveyors, and, I'm, and my talk tonight is essentially against those who manipulate and, and use the popular culture in its worst way, and that's what, that's, that's what I'm against, in a sense. Yes, sir? Well, that, yeah, I, I use that as an example. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, it's a very good. That's a. That's a very good comment. Uh, at that time, I was looking for the other side. I mean, I, I was. I was. I was. 
I, I pointed out that every culture, you know, th it isn't just ours alone. And I don't think, and I'm not suggesting uh, that the violence and, and, and much of the malaise in, in, in our time is solely the result of the mass media. I wouldn't want, I, I hope that that didn't come out of this, uh, of this talk of, of popular culture. But that it operates within a nexus of other things which I think do contribute uh, to things I don't think we can afford today. Maybe other times could afford it. Maybe the Elizabethans could afford it because the, their, it, were, it was limited. I mean, granted, a uh, fellow got tired. He didn't want to go to the, to, uh, the Globe Theater because he'd seen Hamlet or uh, one of the groundlings, and so he went to Suthirk and to the Bear Gardens. I mean, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I realize that human beings have, as Walt Whitman said, I contain multitudes. Do I contradict myself? We all do this. I mean, as I've often pointed out, I'd start the day religiously uh, by reading Peanuts. I mean, I, I, I couldn't, I mean, uh, I have to read Peanuts. I mean, he's, he's awfully good most of the time. He, or, and, and a few other comic strips. We'll talk about comics on, on Wednesday, Professor Berger and Stan Lee and myself. But it doesn't mean that I'm restricted only to that. I may end the day reading Albert Camus and, uh, and so on and so forth. So that uh, I think when we're dealing with individuals, we have to realize that they are very complex. But what I'm saying is when I, the social indices that I see today and the world in which we live, I just don't know whether we can afford it today. Maybe other cultures could. And particularly when it can be proliferated and, and, and when it is so pervasive. In other cultures, it wasn't. It was, it, it was, it was much harder to be exposed to this. I think today it is harder. And, I, and this is what I say with some reluctance. I gave this speech tonight because it would have been much easier to come here and tell you Gee whiz, I looked at the Schwann catalog, and 10 years ago there were only eight recordings of Mahler's Eighth, and now there are 14 recordings of Mahler's Eighth. Isn't that great? Look at how the culture is growing. Yes, but who buys them? I mean, a very small percentage. I mean, you college kids or something and so on. But for every Mahler's Eighth that is sold, I mean, you've got, uh, you've got some, some records and some things that, that are pretty ugly, too. And so I, I just don't know if we can afford it. Yes, sir. Well, minimal, I'd say. Well, One at a time, my friend. I, I can't keep up. Let's let's do the Watergate. I don't know. I don't think. I don't think that that uh, analogy works. He, uh, the coattails didn't work uh, in the in the congressional elections. What you're saying, but I, I doubt. I, I think that those were were mostly in areas where the uh, re uh, Republicans have never been that strong. Anyway, they didn't lose. The the no, the point was that that the, the Watergate thing was a national thing, and the, and the Democrats did everything they could to make people aware of it. It wasn't that they didn't, that they hid it under the table. They thought they had an issue there. And, and maybe, it isn't, maybe it wasn't a very germane issue, but the point is that it had very little effect. The only state, if I recall, that voted for Mr. McGovern was the one in which I reside. Now, on, on football, what about it? That's not something I know. Uh, I don't. I, 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 there was a great story in the New York Times yesterday. Some of you may have seen it. may have been syndicated about all the, the, who, the hullabaloo. I mean, the, the, the big... It was a big, it's big business, I mean, this Super Bowl. I mean, it, it's all, it, 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 it para, I mean, God forbid that anything should go, 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 go gone wrong in the world between three and five yesterday. I mean, nobody would have ever been able to get to the President of the United States. I mean, he's glued there, uh, sending signals to, to uh, George, uh, what's his name, George Wilson? Uh, George Allen? Uh, oh, George Wilson. There's, where are you, George? Uh, there you are. Uh, excuse me, George. 
my friend, I had to get that in, George Allen. I mean, uh, I think that, uh, I think that it's, it, you know, it was a game, a game that started as a simple game, nine guys to 11 guys hit, playing, and now it's, it's become an enormous business. Did you see the, 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 the business of selling kids, and then they have rugs and, and bedspreads and, and, and everything, I mean, so the kids growing up with a whole thing that these are the real heroes. I'm, I don't know. I, I'm not so sure that, that professional football, I mean, there, I mean, there are guys like Lance Renssel who play professional football who are disturbed and sick and he just got arrested. I mean, I don't know. It's not important to say that, but I mean, these are not the ego ideals that I think I'd want for my kids, uh, uh, particularly. I, it's okay, but uh, I, think it's, I think it's much too much. There may be more important things that happened in this world yesterday than the Super Bowl, but we'll never know about them probably. Yes, sir. I think it was growing over the years, but I mean, it, it, it went. Yes. Uh, that's a that's a topic for another hour. I'll try to uh, I'll, I'll try to s summarize it. Uh, what would you say, Jim? You're 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 very much au courant. Thank you, Eric. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. yeah. No, I I I I I I, I, I wanted to know what my friend thought because I think I agree with him. I I I don't think that I think that you know although the press says and passes resolutions at Sigma Delta Chi and at the uh, ASNE and boy, we're gonna, we don't like Spiro Agnew talking, but there has been no question in my mind that there has been, there's been a little, there's been a little intimidation, a little, a little fright, and also on the part of the press, a little soul searching, maybe they, maybe they were wrong, you know, in, in some degrees. Uh, maybe they, maybe they were playing roles, but uh, I, I, I think that they're, I mean, uh, when, 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 I think that the, the administration does not want a, a dialogue, does not want to be criticized, it doesn't in any way, and, and will, uh, in the next four years, the press is going to have a very difficult time maintaining its, its prerogatives. I really do believe that. I, I'm, I'm not in a position to, to document it, although I, I just have a hunch feeling. But you know, the sort of thing that worries me is when, when they decided to black out the game when Washington played uh, uh, the, 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 not this, not the Super Bowl, but the game before. They're going to black it out in, Wa in Washington so it couldn't be seen by there. And Mr. Nixon didn't like that, and he told Mr. Kleindienst to tell him, "Look, it, you're uh, you're flirting with a with a." Uh, possible antitrust action. I mean, that kind of intimidation just because he was angry because he, he, he couldn't see the game in Washington. He had to go all the way to Camp David that day to see the game or something. It worries me. I mean, it, 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 there's, there are important things to think about. And this man was worried about whether George Allen uh, uh, is going to win this game or not. My God, where are our values? I mean, I just, I just, I, 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 I can't. I, I, it, it frightens me. It, it really does. All right, Mr. Allen. David, you find in the battles in public television or public radio, and you find no ray of confidence in the folklore. Oh, no.
uh, uh, certainly uh, public television, which has now been almost eviscerated by the by the uh, by the Nixon administration because they because Sander Van Oker, whom I understand was here last year speaking to you people, you know, because he and and some of the others were, you know, doing what what the press should be doing, which is be analytical and maybe a little critical and so on, and the peak of this man puts in his friend Henry Loomis, uh, and and uh, I think that I think that whatever hope was there has been diminished, unfortunately, George, a great deal, but. In all honesty, I, I was directed that question today in one of the classes uh, that I met with the journalism students. And I, I, I would have to say that, to me, that public, you know, educational television has always, always been sort of something, a, a crutch for the, those who ha purport to hate television, but they really had to have it in their house so they could say, you know, we could turn it on once in a while. But the studies that were done by, uh, uh, you know, the people uh, listen to television, with the big study that was done by, uh, C underwritten by CBS, points out that the elitists and the higher educated watch the same programs. They don't watch very much. I don't think it's had very much effect. Uh, there have been some wonderful programs, but uh, you see, even, a, uh, even programs that are sponsored by Xerox Company, which they've done some wonderful shows, and they're now doing this perfectly stunning show with the uh, I, you know, I'm saying something good about uh, public culture. Of course, there are many good things. Uh, Alistair Cook's series on America. I, do you see it here, names? Yeah. I mean, they're 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 stunning. They're, they're, the production is good. It's literate. It's so on and so forth. But that's 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 what I call the Sunday ghetto sort of thing. I mean, you know, that that's Alistair Cook was on 20 years ago with a program called Omni, what was it, Omnibus. You know, it was great. But uh, what happened to Sunday television? It's all. It, it didn't pay, and now it's all football games on Sunday on the network. We used to have omnibus and so on. So there's Al Alistair Cook, and he comes on at 10 o'clock at night in Boston. I don't know what time he comes on here. And it isn't enough. It isn't enough, George, because that's, that's, a, that's a little ray of hope. But it's like a little stream that goes into the ocean. And the little stream may have a little salubrious effect, but you got that dirty Mississippi, all that gluck coming down and spelling it out. I don't think it's enough. I, 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 I wish it were so, but I... I don't, I don't believe it's enough. That, so it's a ray of hope, but that's all it is for me. Yes, sir. Well, I, I'm, I'm sensitive to that idea, but, uh, and as a matter of fact, in Daniel Walker's, uh, uh, before he became governor of Illinois, you know, he, was on, he headed this big commission on violence of what, of what happened. Uh, and uh, there's no question, Sam Hayakawa once wrote a, a, very, a very interesting article about blacks who watch television. You know, you know this very well, uh, uh, Mr. Berger. He's, president of your university, uh, but this was, this was before he was president. He wrote some pretty good pieces, and you know, he says the people, the, the lumpen proletariats, you want to call them, or the have-nots watch this thing, but what kind of values are they being sold on television? They're being told, you can have a Cadillac too. Go in and get a Cadillac. Get all these rich things. Get all these rich foods and so on. Come into the mainstream of American materialism, and that, that doesn't cause the kind of human revolution that I'm looking for. That causes it seems to me that has a great factor, and I can't prove it, but it seems to me that what happens when, when you had the riots in, in Watts and in Detroit and so on, and, and, uh, which happened a few years ago, what's the first thing they did was looting. What did they loot for? Television sets and, 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 and materialistic things. So I, I can't agree with that, if that professor, I don't know who you're quoting, uh, who says that it has, a, it has a volatizing or energizing effect. I don't think it does. I think it, it all that television doing is showing these have-nots, these people who are poor, that if you really want to get to be what, like the rich people, you've got to come and grab it or take it or you, or you aspire to that. And I, won't, I don't like it. I, 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 think we, I think we're going to have to have a different set of values in this country if you want to, if you want a kind of country which I think you're talking about. It's not going to come that way. Any other questions? All right. I think we, one more? Okay.
Oh, sure, and there'll be some good stuff, too. I think that's a very good point. Uh, you know, I, again, I, I, I don't, we've, we've gone much too long, and there's so many things I'd like to say. Uh, there, there, there's a part of me that, 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 you see, pop art, is pop art, and I would say this, and maybe it ended on a positive note. I mean, it can do, it, it can do, uh, it can be ameliorative. I, I've just written a book, it's come out a month or two ago, called A Celluloid Weapon, Social Comment in American Film, uh, which you're nodding, maybe you've seen it, but uh, I, uh, uh, I point out that from 1906 until 1972, Hollywood has had a long tradition, uh, not many of their films, but a portion of their films which dealt with the most, some of the most serious problems that they echoed it. And, and I, it, if anything, it's a very positive book about popular culture or, or mass culture. I mean, uh, uh, that Upton Sinclair's book, The Jungle, was made into a film in uh, 1911, 1912, and it was one of the best of, of all of his books in terms of being made into a movie, or McTeague, uh, being made into the great classic greed, or, or and so on and so forth. It's not, it could do it. I, I, I hope, what I, what really what I'm hoping for is a popular culture that really is a popular culture. Popular, coming from the word populous, meaning a people's culture. That's what I hope will come out this week, and that's what I pray for. Let's end it with that. Well. Again, thank you, Dr. White. You'll have plenty of opportunity to talk with Dr. White throughout this week. He'll be here until Thursday morning. Thanks for coming. We'll see you later. <laughs>